Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial of Cognitive Radio. In this tutorial, we are going to look into the security issues of Cognitive Radio and then look inside the primary user emulation attack in detail. Because Cognitive Radio is a software controlled radio, there are several types of attacks that are inherent to the basic architecture of the system. Now let's look into different type of security issues in Cognitive Radio parting into different layers. In physical layer, one of the most common attack is a jamming attack. The malicious secondary user intentionally transmits signal in a license band and jams primary and other secondary users. Now what specifically this means is the secondary user who is an attacker somehow gets to sense the primary band and then programmatically is able to replicate the uh, primary or license band and then starts transmitting garbage data in that primary license bands resulting in the other nodes not being able to communicate through that specific band. The other type of attack in this line is primary receiver jamming attack. A receiver jamming attack is one where the secondary user does not know the location of the primary receiver. The attacker can take advantage of this to launch a primary receiver jamming attack. For example, the attacker may move closer to the primary receiver and request transmission from the secondary user towards it. This will in turn cause interference to the primary receiver. So what specifically uh, this does is that the receiver basically, uh, the attacker basically goes closer to the receiver and keeps on uh, transmitting the garbage data, denying the receiver to actually receive the valid and legitimate data coming from the other licensed uh, user or cognitive radio user. Now there are again two main categories of PUE attack. The first one is known as selfish PUE attack. In selfish primary user emulation attack, a selfish attacker aims at stealing the bandwidth from the legitimate secondary user for its own transmission. The attacker will monitor the spectrum. Once an unoccupied spectrum band is discovered, it will compete with the legitimate secondary users by emulating the primary signal. A selfish attacker is a rational attacker in the sense that if it is detected by legitimate secondary users and secondary users reclaim the spectrum opportunity by switching back to the band, it has to leave the band. So what we understand is that a selfish a uh, PWE attack is one where uh, it is possible for the secondary user to monitor the activity spectrum activity and if multiple uh, secondary users cooperatively uh, finds out that a particular node is secondary uh, is a malicious node and then goes on to compete for that spectrum the attacker has to leave. One of the other types of attacks that we commonly see in cognitive radio is key depletion attack. Now, because the spectrums have been sensed, allocated and reallocated quite frequently, tremendous number of sessions are generated during the course of a communication. Large number of sessions causes a frequent change of keys. Security protocols of the transport layer like SSL, TSSL establishes cryptographic key at the beginning of every session. Since number of sessions in cognitive radio networks are extremely large, large number of keys are established, thereby increasing the probability of using the same key twice. Key repetition can be exploited to break the underlying CIFR system, uh, which means that because you have several number of uh, sessions, many number of times the keys have been generated 
and due to this if an attacker keeps observing the data it has a high probability of breaking the cipher system uh, generally such type of attacks are carried out at the transport layer because sessions are being managed at the transport layer the other common attack is a hole attack in the hole attack node which pretend is called a hole there are various type of hole attacks such as black hole attack gray hole attack worm hole attack and so on a black hole attack is defined as the attack in which malicious node attracts or request packets from every other node and drops all the packets which means that no transmission is going through this nodes the gray hole attack is defined as the one in which the malicious node selectively drops the packet for instance a malicious node decides to target particular node number a and b and then all the packets coming from node number a and b within the ad hoc uh, secondary network uh, in the context of cognitive radio are being dropped by this node the other important types of attack that is being observed is ripple effect attack the main objective of the malicious node here is to provide wrong channel information so that the other nodes change their channel this false information will transmit on hop by hop basis and in turn the entire network will come into a confusion state this disrupt the traffic for a long time now what specifically happens over here is uh, so if the node gets a data from the secondary uh, uh, cognitive radio base station about the state of the network about the state of the free spectrum now the nodes closer to the uh, spectrum has the responsibility to mitigate this information uh, among the other nodes now what they do is they decide to uh, just change this information and propagate it to the next stop now next stop gets a wrong information and thus wrong information is mitigated across the entire network destabilizing the entire network such kind of attacks are known as uh, ripple effect attack